Well, today I'm going to be uh, dealing with a thing called sanding. And I'm going to be using some 220 abrasive paper to, to, to get things ready for a finish. So stay tuned. Cold in the garage today. Got my gloves on. Got my little box here. All ready for some sanding mayhem. Now, this is some 220 abrasive. That's generally what they use before finishing on your Martin guitars and whatnot. They don't go any finer than that. I've been known to go a lot finer when I'm when I'm working on my, my customs. But for this one, I'm just gonna Do that and take down whatever edges. I already took off a lot of the, the whatever Casper varnish on this with uh, the uh, whatchamacallit lacquer thinner. So I'm just a wee bit here and I don't I don't care if the side looks relic or, or whatnot. Because my first step in the finishing process is going to be to dye this thing. So Basically, how clean the pores are depends on how much dye actually goes into the wood itself and how much <sighs> sits on top. And you do get a variation in color. But I'm trying a few different things, so I, I wanted to leave a little bit of the lettering behind. Or a hint of the lettering. Because I'm a maniac that way. Sort of a history of the box. So this is more of a relic sand than it is an, an actual finished sand. And I also want to break the edges a little bit. You usually don't leave marks if you go with the grain when you're sanding. Which is one reason why I like to do hand sanding at all levels. Some people like those orbitals, but they, they, they put a bunch of swirls in there and if you get a little piece of metal in there or whatever it can really ruin a finish. So I like hand sanding. And again, for the body I don't have to do a lot. Neck here, I, I've got some to do because it's still fairly rough.
hit every edge. So you gotta clean up the cuts I made on this just a little bit on the inside. strip like this, bend it so I can get inside the holes. That's pretty good. Tool. Now that it, I got it all glued up on the inside, you can see I have the, the back brace there and that, that helps support the, the neck and hopefully it'll transfer some of the sound into the back, which is a lot thinner than the top. And then I, I cut out uh, right in here, that's a small little brace. That I, that I put over to cover the channel there and that's made out of uh, Indian rosewood fancy stuff so yeah just gonna wipe off the neck a little bit So I'm going to tape that off. I don't want any of my dye going on the neck. right there. What's so worried about in there? It's not like it's ever going to be visible. Especially when the neck is on there. Right like that.
this is a blue painter's tape. So it sticks well enough, but it doesn't stick that well. <laughs> So yeah, I am over taping this. But that way, I don't have to worry about my die getting on there because that, that stuff is almost impossible to get off of anything. So there. That's ready for dying. And this is ready for sanding. This already has a lacquer finish on it of some kind, and I'm, I'm going to be applying more. But I just want to rough it up a little bit so it can receive it. And yes, I am going to be painting the fingerboards. And yes, I am going to be painting, or not painting, but lacquering the fingerboard. And yes, I will be lacquering over the frets. And then I'll tape off and then I'll use stainless steel to take the, the lacquer off the threats, frets. So, you know, it's all a process.
just gonna rub this down. It's got enough of the sanding there. And we'll call that good for sanding. And this being a new year, remember to like and share our videos. Subscribe, <laughs> subscribe like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, like, share. Subscribe, like, share.